what you're looking at is a Ford 289 engine with the, in some ways, infamous Edelbrock Performer 289 four barrel intake manifold. Now, I say infamous because they're, they're known to be not friendly with Ford carburetors. So this video will show you how to either adapt a Ford two barrel to this carburetor or how to put on a Ford four barrel such as the 4100 and have it seal. Um, the problem with these involves the width of these side rails. They're just too narrow to uh, seal the Ford carburetor. The Ford intake manifold has solid aluminum in this area on both sides. The Edelbrock does not. Now, if you're looking at this real close, you might say, what the, what the heck is this? That's a, uh, that's a vacuum port I put in there a long, long time ago, 25 years ago or so. They're glued in on each side with epoxy. It's just copper plumbing pipe. It's 3 8 inch copper. And it's it's been there for a good 25 years, so that hasn't been a problem. And if you're looking really close, you'll see this. That's a low car cable. It controls the Ford four-speed automatic transmission that's currently in this car. This is a 1967 Mustang. It's the original 289 engine. And if you have an old car that you want to put in a mid 80s overdrive automatic you need the cable but we won't be going into that because that's a that's an incredible story on its own so let's go look at the carburetors here we have on the left a ford 2150 carburetor it's from a uh, mercury monarch that's like a ford granada um, this carburetor has been on the engine you just saw for a long time somewhere around 20 years and it uh, it runs flawlessly as you can see it's uh, it's set up for that Ford four-speed automatic but we're not going to go into that but the the part you do need to see is right here this bolts on to the the Edelbrock intake manifold you saw this these are two pieces of quarter-inch aluminum that I that I uh, I machined. You should. You could say I drilled the holes here with hole saws, drilled this hole here, epoxied in a uh, plumbing connector, which serves as a PCV point, PCV port, and uh, the carburetor bolts to the aluminum, and then it also bolts to the intake manifold, and this works just fine. This is the uh, gasket I had underneath it. I, I cut away these little parts here because of uh, the gasket was just too wide and as I recall the throttle linkage and the uh, choke linkage was interfering with it but you can see how tiny the area is that this has to seal how narrow it is so that's the two barrel over here on the right we have the, uh, the Ford four barrel carburetor it's a 4100 carburetor it's considered one of the one of the best carburetors you can possibly have for a uh, for a small block Ford engine. And the way you get these to seal up, I have these in order. I have this uh, normal four hole gasket on the bottom. That's the first thing that touches the intake manifold. And here's the tricky part. This is a piece of uh, aluminum. It's um, looks to be a, a little bit more than 1 16th of an inch. It's just, just some sheet metal I had laying around. I drilled out the, the four holes for the, for the Venturis, the bolt holes, and I kept it nice and, you know, nice and fat all around here. It seals everything up. So that comes next. And we have another gasket, of course. Looks like I got them all turned out of whack. Then we have this uh, authentic Ford one inch spacer. And this comes from the mid sixties. And it's, it's meant for the Ford carburetors, but it's, but it's also meant for a Ford intake manifold. And if you remember the Edelbrock you looked at, 
this is much wider between my fingers, finger and thumb, than it was on the Edelbrock. So that is why this piece exists. It's got a nice big flat surface here against the uh, intake manifold. You got another gasket that seals up the bottom of this one inch spacer. On top of the one inch spacer goes another gasket, of course. And we have this. And I can verify that that works. There's no uh, vacuum leaks. There's no problems whatsoever. So thank you very much.